We'll start at, well, at seven o'clock. How's that? Bingo. Here we are. Is it seven o'clock? It is seven o'clock. It is. Okay. Well then, hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Sunday night webinar. It's March 29th and we want to welcome everybody. We have, oh my goodness, over 200 people joining us already and they're joining us, uh, wow, very, very quickly. So, uh, Mr. Laurie is with us tonight. If you have any questions, please go down to the question, enter them in, and we would be very, very glad to uh, address them uh, in a little bit. But right now, uh, Mr. Laurie, I think uh, we would like to give you the microphone. And uh, Raj, do you have anything beforehand? No, I'll be taking notes and answering questions in the chat room and uh, gathering questions to forward uh, to Mark uh, when he asks for them. Okay, and with that, uh, it's all yours, Mr. Lord. And there you are. Oh, we, there we are, good, that's the, uh, that's that's the, the casual one. <laughs> and that's okay. tonight's. That's, the, that's tonight's, uh, yeah, that's the casual look. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for joining again. Uh, I appreciate it. We'll keep doing these every Sunday uh, as long as, we need to. Um, I think that I'd like to start off by saying that one of the most difficult things for me personally, and I think for people generally, is that it's very tough to live in the world of ambiguity. I think that we all really want to know what tomorrow looks like, what this afternoon looks like, what it's going to look like in a week. And some of us react better to that than others. I'm one that likes to kind of know i have my notepad and i cross things off and i label things and i write things out and i put bullet points so both personally and professionally living in the world of ambiguity is a very difficult place and um trying to get answers out of state ed or the government or the governor is uh really difficult there's a lot of times when people don't want to commit uh, and I understand that because things change so quickly. So I, I think what I think what I'll do this evening is give you an update on where I think we are globally as a state, because the, the, beyond the state is really not too much of my concern. And then in the district, and then what I did is I took the feedback questions that Roger and Gene sent to me this week from the last webinar, and I'll try to answer any of those questions very briefly that I can, and um, then we'll go on to new questions if I have it, and then I'll give some new information. All right, so that's kind of my script for the night. And I'll stay on as long as we have to. Last week, we stayed on until 8.30, and I think we got a lot accomplished, okay? So uh, the governor has chosen to close school in two-week increments. While that's a little bit annoying, I can understand why he's doing that. We're out until April 15th. That does not mean we're coming back April 16th. He's choosing for various reasons to do this out in two week blocks because it's such a fluid uh, a fluid situation. I don't think there's any chance, any chance that we would come back before April 20th. And I think that's a very, very, very highly, highly unlikely scenario. When we try to count his rolling ca calendar, and we see and read that he tells us that this is going to hit its apex in upstate New York closer to April 15th. And hopefully we'll go on the downslide after that. There's no way we'll be bringing people back on the downslide uh, of, the, of the apex. If, if I'm drawing a good picture, I hope I am for you. I think what he's planning to do is to reopen in the way he last closed. So for instance, on Friday, they closed down some construction, non-essential construction. So I would think he might open construction back. Then he might go back to um, some other group. I, I, again, again, something that I can't think of. I don't know, maybe he'd go back to restaurants for a certain period of time, eight to five, eight to four, and then expand it back on the downside of it as slowly as he closed it on the upside of it to try and keep testing the waters. So I think at the bottom or the base of that downslide would be schools. And if you're following the picture that I'm painting, I think schools would be at, 
at the base and that that wouldn't take us that would take us closer to may so i try to draw a little uh little apex and down slide based on the best information that we had and please don't go out there saying or going to the audio vault saying that mark Laurie said that but i would think the middle of may would be our best hope um to, to have some kind of return to school we would then need to be able to return cleaners and uh, people that you know get the school ready we'd have to do that then i think we'd probably have a few days where we would bring teachers back and then finally students back that, that would be the way i would like to do it the 180 day uh, rule i think we're in really good shape with uh, because we did have a couple of closure days before well we, we technically and there's still some confusion about that technically um when the department of health closed schools it's my understanding that the 180 day rule began and that was that sunday we closed so i think we're still in good shape and if that wasn't true we still have uh a couple of two days that would take us right through to the governor's closing our governor has played this very very well very conservatively and um i think he'll bring us back very slowly and very strategically when the time comes so it's only my conjecture it's only my uh, theory it's nothing that's been told to me or proven to me but i think that the hope would be to get people back if nothing else changed at the middle or end of may i could come in next sunday and say that was total malarkey but trying to help people understand the world of ambiguity and trying to rationally write this out in a theory i would think that would take us somewhere before memorial day or right after memorial day which really wouldn't be a bad thing for a lot of reasons but that's not with any uh, certainty um we've had a really successful two weeks of cooperation with people uh staff teachers everyone I know people are itching to get back into the rooms to pick up a plant or a flower or a book, or we really just need people to stay away. Uh, and I know that's difficult. Um, we've had the same essential personnel coming in because meals are so important. You know, that's 36,800 meals we gave uh, to the community. And again, we saw many cases where it wasn't kids having the meal i have no problem with that i'm not advertising it that way but i have no problem with that because we're as long as people aren't wasting them or throwing away the meals we're feeding somebody who needs something and that's been my belief and philosophy all along and it will rem remain being my belief in philosophy we printed a lot of pieces of paper in the last week um, and it's something that we're going to have to move away from as we go into our next round, and I hope to talk a little bit more about that in a couple of minutes. Uh, a lot of people stuffed and printed and copied paper to be given out. And I know we're still a community that relies a lot on paper, but maybe this will be the leverage to help get some things done so that we don't need and use as much. Um, I, um, I think we also did a good job with communications and with medications and those again, were my four points and I'm constantly grading myself against how I'm working with the team around here to do that. So I think we're doing okay. We, we still need to pump out information as we get it in a timely way. We really need to. So I closed the week saying we got to have these first learning packets out. We've got to have a handle on food and then we can move into the next phase. And the next phase is really more around technology. Um, and sharing through technology. And I'll talk about a couple of the issues we're having. So that's my view of the state from many, many feet away. As superintendents in Niagara and Orleans County, we have made a pact to stay together, meaning that Wilson will stay with us and Barker and Roy Hart and Medina and Luport and Niagara Reef will all, North Tonawanda will stay together and do this together. Um, because our communities are so contiguous and we share people back and forth so often. So that we, we've made that pack and we've lived by it. Let me, let me start running, literally running through questions and giving you answers uh, to the questions from last week. 
and then um, we'll move into new um, new information. Uh, sub pay, how was it determined? I determined the sub pay, made a recommendation to the board. We want to pay as many subs as substitute teachers as we can. Those who are in long-term positions, those who were going to be in long-term positions, those that sub for us um, over 75 days are getting full weeks worth of pay. That does not include um, the, the two-week break that they wouldn't have received the put receive the pay um, so if you have questions about that I've given all that direction to Miss Massaro you can contact her on Tuesday or Wednesday of this week if there's a question about your ASAP um, sub days etc cetera, etc cetera. but I made that decision alone and made the recommendation um, we try we're trying to build some loyalty with our subs I'm sorry we can't do it for all of the subs we were just turning a quarter and getting some subs in the district and I, I hope that you all stay with us. Mr. Um, Laurie, may I interrupt you for a moment? Yes, I got did. a question. Uh -huh. <laughs> it did. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I got a question from a uh, anonymous teacher who is a sub yeah. who said, who said uh, she understands that any substitute teacher who is, what, 75 days or above is yes. going to get regular pay. Yes. She has looked into it and has found out that if they claim unemployment, they can actually get more money, so to speak. That's right. Yep. Is that a possibility or is that something that you can speak to? Well, it is a possibility. That person would have to make a choice then. They can't have it both ways. Oh, absolutely. As much as we might like it, that's why we continually publish Miss Massaro's number and say, you know, so so I guess technically it is possible, especially for an uncertified sub, um, that may be possible. So um, I that's why we keep broadcasting her number. You can't have it both ways. If you do try to have it both ways, we're going to contest your unemployment. Okay, um, so just no, just be aware of that. So if you if you you know, and, and on the negative side, if you do it both ways, we'll contest your unemployment. If you choose to take unemployment and not the sub pay, that won't be held against you. That's a logical, rational, financial decision I would make or encourage people to make. You know, the district is monitoring because the district pays into the unemployment pot, so we're monitoring it both ways. But I, if you think you're going to make out better that way, then go for it. And you, it won't be, oh, God, we hold that against you. We're not counting days. No, if that's the better financial avenue, take it. Just don't take both ways. We'll contest anyone who's taking both ways. And we'll take that, we'll, we'll take the, the con contesting to, you know, unemployment and, and, and make sure that we either do not get their unemployment tonight or recoup our money if we've paid them. Does that make sense, uh, Gene? Yes, it does. And 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 from the attitude that the question, the, you know, the, the person's attitude, she uh, was very very appreciative of the fact that you were going to pay the teachers the seventy five days right. over. And she said thank you. Right. And she said, but if we can <laughs> be more, uh, well, make more money doing that, right? Would it be possible? Yep, I do that. I'm telling you, I do that. Okay. I, I looked at it. I looked into it for myself. It doesn't work out well for me to take on it. <laughs> um, yeah. No. By all means, by all means, just don't take it both ways. Because oh no, we, I, I don't think that this person had yeah, that in right. mind at all. Yeah. No, I could sense by the way you're reading the question that it was a purely, uh, purely a question and not a way to game the system. Um, so yeah, no, that's good. That's good. So we had to make a real tough decision there. So. It's, I, it's, I, I don't feel good about making that decision, but in light of the budget I'm going to talk about, it's a decision I had to make. The other people that I feel really bad for is that we're not paying our bus our bus vendors. I don't want to get too much into that because more guidance is coming on that, but there are bus drivers and bus associates who are, are on unemployment. And I'm, you know, you all know how hard it is to get bus drivers and bus associates. So uh, that, that's, been a, that's been a tough call too. Next. Uh, a teacher asked last week, can we send cards to our students? You know, like just uh, cards, thinking of your cards. Sure. If you want to put them in an envelope and mail them to the school, 
the school will then mail will stamp them and mail them out or mail them to the central office and we'll do the postage here. Um, Ray's picked up a lot of jobs. He's now the postage uh, director too. Um, but if, if, if there is a teacher who wanted to mail cards to their kids, which I think is a great idea, uh, handwritten cards, uh, put them in an envelope and mail them to us, drop them by the door, put them in the central office mailbox, and we'll take and just put on their mailing to kids. We'll take them out and we'll do the posters for them. Zoom. Lots of questions about Zoom and compromising identity. One of the things, the first thing that Ray insisted on, and so rightly so, was to make sure we only use vetted technology. Uh, can't, there are so many offers and so many websites out there right now, and some of them are very good and very altruistic. But unfortunately, there are some that are not, and we aren't comfortable using something that's not vetted. I understand the concerns about Zoom. I understand them clearly. I understand them on many levels, many, many, many levels, if you know what I'm inferring. But Zoom is an approved, uh, approved use. I saw teachers from LaSalle and Niagara Falls High School make wonderful videos, eight minutes long, 15 minutes long, with various teachers saying we're with you. They did an awesome job checking their backgrounds, you know, looking at what was behind them. And making sure it was set up correctly they were great we'll continue to use zoom i know the pitfalls i know the future dangers of it i'm very cognizant of all of those things and i know you know what i'm speaking about um, i have a great belief in the power of what a teacher does that's why we we're going all the way down this mental health road and changing the focus of what teachers are doing they provide so much mental health in addition to what our counselors do but Zoom, you just need to be careful. You just need to vet yourself and look at where you're going and who you're with. And you need to slow down and take your time. Zoom is not going to replace the great things that our teachers do. It's not going to happen, at least not on my watch. I, I, I can't say it any more clearly or I can't take care of the elephant in the room any more directly. Zoom is an approved technology piece. We use it to our advantage. Who would have ever thought it would come to this? Please, if you're using it, be mindful of what's behind you and around you. Please use it appropriately. I'm not backing off of that, and I'm not looking to supplant or, or do anything else in the future, at least while I'm around. There's a great value in why we have teachers. We, uh, we need to talk more about special ed. It's the, probably another one of the most challenging areas. Uh, this week, I'm going to, actually tomorrow at 10 o'clock, I'm going to meet with our central special ed uh, chair people because I, I, I've held back on annual reviews while we're in this mode. But next week, I'm going to ask Cheryl Mateer, Ken Krieger, Franconi, Kathy Contento to meet with me virtually here and start to, as we are allowed to under state guidance, have special ed annual reviews uh, as long as the parent consents in writing and the district will consent as well, we're going to start to have those annual reviews. I wanted to see how long this was going to be, but it looks like it's going to be longer rather than shorter. So tomorrow I'm going to meet with the special ed team and we'll move on annual reviews. There's no new information in any of those packets. All of those packets were the packets. New information, we'll start, we'll start to talk about that tonight and going forward. The packets are the packets, the links are the links, Nothing new was put in them. Somebody didn't sneak an extra page in there or a different page to give new information. Those are reinforcement packets only. As we move forward and as I finish answering these questions, I'll talk more about my beliefs about going forward with learning packets. The report card schedule is the report card schedule. Tonight ended the, uh, the, opening, the open window. Teachers three through 12 need to have their report card grades in by Wednesday. Ray is going to bring in two people to print and send report cards. Please be liberal with the use of the incomplete. Give the student the, the benefit of the doubt. Always err on the side of the student. You know I'm not going to go through every nuance of every situation. Err on the side of the student. Uh, we'll keep the, some districts are extending it. Some districts are making the report cards into to one, you know, 20, the whole 20 weeks will be one report card. I thought normalcy routine was best 
That's what drove my decision to keep the report card scheduled the same. Tenure, how does this affect tenure? And if I'm scheduled to get tenure, does this change anything? It changes nothing. The board doesn't officially, you don't officially get tenure until you work one day in September. So we just have a ceremony and we do all of your health forms and all of that paperwork a celebration in May and June, you get your paperwork done. If you were going to get tenure, you had earned tenure, you're still going to get tenure. Uh, that We're not going to deny it. We're not going to take it away. We're not going to prolong it. Uh, I can think of maybe one case when someone is, or one or two cases when somebody's been out long, 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 long term, when we'll have a personal conversation. Otherwise, the 25 or so individuals who are slated to get tenure uh, September 1st or the, the first day they work will receive tenure. That shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. The only thing I would ask those is not don't call Louise in order to get your health, your physical scheduled. You can get a physical, but don't call the district. There's no one in the health office to schedule your physical. But tenure, this doesn't impact tenure decisions at all. Uh, if you're in if you're in your third and a half year, uh, we should have known by now whether you're going to get tenure. Uh, this shouldn't these last 10 weeks, no matter what happens, shouldn't be the determining factor. Will, will this school year extend into the, into the summer and next year? My answer is no. When June 30th hits, all bets are off and we'll close the 1920 school year and we'll move into the 2021 school year. The only caveat to that would be is if we don't return and, and, and we, we haven't had the chance to celebrate our senior class, would I do things in July? The answer would be yes. What do I mean? I mean, would we ever put on a production of The Wiz in July? I hope, because I, I hope we do The Wiz. They work really hard for it. The kids worked hard for it. The middle school drama, if there's middle school drama to be done, we, we would ask and hope that we could do that in July. Could we have a graduation, a class day, a prom, a post-prom in July? I hope so. I would work like heck to make sure we did everything we could for our seniors if we were able to come together in July and not do it before June is out. I'm not saying it's canceled or closed right now. I'm saying, what would we do in July? We would do those special events for the senior class, which I feel very badly about if we're not able to return, but I'm still hopeful that we'll have that as our uh, way to end the school year. Uh, training on digital platforms, I'm gonna ask you to hold on that. Ray, Mr. Corella, otherwise known as Rick, and I will talk about that in a few minutes. Um, that's a big part of what I want to talk about. Does this impact retirement? Does it impact any one of the teachers that are retiring? I hope for the those that are retiring, you'll get to see your teach your students one last time. Uh, I, I'm I'm pretty hopeful that we can pull that off, but that's not a definite. Doesn't ref doesn't impact your retirement plans in any way, shape, or form. Construction, we got a subsequent memo Friday. We have to close down all of our construction projects except for four schools. 79th Street, there's work outside. There's a hole and wiring that needs to be run. I'm not gonna fill in the hole without putting the wiring in. So they're gonna run the wires to the school, fill the hole in and move away from 79th Street. Maple Man and Hyde Park, we're, we're, we were using these this time to get the ceilings down and do a lot of work as we put as we put preparations in place for the air conditioning we're putting in. What we're gonna do in those three schools is take the remaining ceiling downs in the corridors and in the classrooms, um, put the hangers up, clean the rooms and repurpose the furniture right back to where they were. Uh, High Park and High Park 79th and Maple, we're not gonna get to all the floors, Maple's first floor, High Park's first floor, Man's first floor, we're not gonna get to that. So when people return, they won't expect to see that, but we're gonna finish that part of the construction and then call the, the uh, men and women off of construction. Uh, that should take about seven to 10 more days, and then you won't see them until the governor releases that, that work. Uh, I'm gonna do a Facebook Live with two students from Niagara Falls High School because we've talked to, I've talked to a lot of adults and I feel an obligation and, and it's only right that I talk to some students. I'll do that four o'clock on Tuesday now, not tomorrow, 
four o'clock Tuesday and we'll publish it and post the interview. I keep talking about the census on my calls. It's easy to forget that. Please, if you haven't, it's important to our city and our school district. I talked about annual reviews already. To, on our call with the with this New York State School Board yesterday, uh, a lot of no answers, a lot of we'll sees, a lot of next week, a couple of next weeks we got. What's gonna happen with the Regents exams for our eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders? They said they promised us an answer by the end of this coming week. Same thing with APPR. They promised us an answer by the end of this coming week, how we're gonna handle those things. So I think that um, I think that those are the two big questions that we'll have more information on. The minute I get it, we'll post it and call on it. Regents exams and APPR decisions coming this week. Um, school board election and school board uh, budget vote. They moved the primary vote till June 23rd. We still haven't heard. Our, ours is still slated for May 19th, both on the budget and on the school board election. I'm thinking though that we may hear something about that this week as well, but right now that hasn't been moved. Um, let me move on here. Let's see. Let me talk about budget and then um, loaner laptops and then learning packets. Those are my last three items and I think I then have covered all the questions. Let's talk about budget first. Um, the, the, state started, the state started this budget process with a $6 billion budget gap, and it's growing by the day. I've heard numbers as high as $12 billion. Uh, that doesn't bode well for schools. Um, I, I want to give you information, but not panic anyone, because we don't know all of the facts yet. What, I was on a phone call yesterday with Senator Ort and Assemblyman Morinello. They're the two representatives of the Niagara Falls School District, and they're the two that I call frequently to get information. They both told me the same thing on separate calls. One, that they believe that a budget will be passed for the state on April 1st, um, and that the policy parts of the budget would include bail reform and legalization of marijuana. I just read in, in some, um, some reports I get that marijuana is probably going to be off the table, but it's still unknown. The federal stimulus budget includes a provision, um, and just try and follow me, follow with me on this. It includes a provision that in order to take the stimulus money from the federal government, the governor has to sign a pledge that says he will not transfer Medicaid and Me Medicare payments to the counties. That was something that they were very worried about, that Medicare and Medicaid payments would be put on the backs of the taxpayers. But in this stimulus package that uh, Senator Schumer helped negotiate, and you'll see why the governor's not happy with Senator Schumer right now, he said, you've got to hold Medicare and Medicaid harmless. You can't cut that and you can't put that on the backs of taxpayers. Well, when you look at the state budget, the next biggest pot of money is education, which brings to the natural conclusion that if you don't touch Medicare or Medicaid, you're going to have to do something with education. We were promised $1,863,249 from the governor in our recent um, uh, allocation for next year. We've been warned that that money that he promised us originally might not even be there, so don't count on that, let alone the money that the legislature usually kicks in. If we don't count on that million eight, that brings our school district gap up to 6.2 million, okay? That's what I have to wrestle with with the board and the um, finance office here this week. We're gonna assume we're getting nothing and how are we gonna do it? Let me give you the good news. The Board of Education was very adept at putting away reserves, not quite that much, but putting away reserves. I'm gonna do everything that's humanly possible to keep every program and person employed that we that we started this crisis with. Um, so please know that's the end that the board and I will work from, but the budget gap is large. It's really large. And with this new information this week, 
um, uh, it, it makes it even a more of a challenging uh, haul. But I'm not afraid of it. We will get it done. We will work hard. We will we will keep our programs and people intact because that's what our kids in our community needs. So that's where we are with the budget. Um, and that's living in the world of ambiguity. Loaner laptops. We've had a call for loaner laptops and, and I am not opposed to doing this. What becomes the challenge with loaning laptops and Ray has been working in his head and with his staff a plan to do it. What becomes the biggest obstacle and you know I'm not the greatest technology person. What becomes the biggest obstacle is we can loan someone a laptop or a device, but what will it hook to to give it service? Okay? And we have gone so far as to try to determine places in the city that don't have service. So yesterday our meeting was about what if we put um, routers, I guess they're called, or hotspots or things like that out around the community. You know, then, then there becomes issues about um, vandalism, there becomes issues about um, upkeep and maintenance of those. So we're still wrestling with that. We're talking to some of our community partners, partners at the Housing Authority, partners at city government, partners in different businesses. We're talking about can we expand the bandwidth around our schools to touch more homes there. So I am not opposed to lending materials to our students that don't have them, can't afford them, but I have to know they're going to be used not just as a paperweight, but for learning. So it's not just as simple as saying, come to the front of Niagara Falls High School, sign your loan or laptop out for so many days, here would be the penalties, go, go ahead and take it. It's what are you going to do with it when you have it, and how are you going to link it and hook it up? So that's what we have to work on this week as well. Finally, learning packets. The team, the coaches, uh, the department chair people, the administrators did a yeoman's job all under the direction of Mr. Corella, who led the effort to put out a reinforcement packet of three weeks worth of work. That, that's great. That is really, it was really great. People were, what was even greater was seeing people do the packets and not just take papers home and use them as a paperweight. Our daycare site, I'll flip this in for first responders, is the Boys and Girls Club. They had 18 students there. I went by in the morning and they were doing packets. It was great. Uh, there were 18 kids there doing socially distant, doing packets with people helping them do packets. In the afternoon, they let them have some free time to play, which was great too, but it was great to see the kids doing them. It was great to see kids walking away from Niagara Falls High School opening their packet and looking at pages and reading things and trying to figure out how to do things. That was awesome. Niagara Falls High School did an awesome job preparing those packets. All in all, we printed close to 40, 4,500 packets K to eight. And Mrs. Jones told me that there were 700 packets picked up from the high school. So that's over 5,000 packets delivered to the community. That was great. We even had parents calling who couldn't get out to a school calling and we dropped them off at, on, on the porches of homes. There are very few packets left. Those packets will be available tomorrow at schools. They'll probably be gone after tomorrow. The other thing I didn't mention on either of my calls or video is that we have now boxed all of the teachers desk work uh, in boxes, the teacher desk materials, and they're going to be put out um, for taking and consumption and use and hopeful reading. So I'm joined by Mr. Carell and Mr. Granary here at the at central office, and I'm going to start this and I'm going to ask them to weigh in. Um, we have to move away from paper packets to technology. That's all caveated by two things. Please, there are two things you have to give me some leeway on and some ambiguity on. I can't answer the question yet about what we're gonna do for students who don't have technology. I try to set this conversation up by telling you we're working on that. We have to be equitable to everyone. It's not fair to our kids that don't. I have to be, we have to be equitable. 
I don't have an answer for that right now. We're working on it. The, the 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 second part of it is we have to we have to um, turn so, turn this work back over to the teachers now, and we have to move forward with not just reinforcement packets but new learning packets as we get into round two of learning packets. Uh, there's it's just it would be a waste of paper, a waste of time to expect us to just make more. Re and it's not really even practical. Let's just call it what it is. We bought three weeks worth of work. Some packets are 125 pages long. We, we can't do that again. That's just busy work. That's not what we're about. That's not what teachers are. That's not, that was just a stopgap measure. Let's just call it what it was. So let me, let me give you a few points here. And again, you have to be patient because we're not going to have all the answers on this. That's what we've been working all Saturday and Sunday on though. We have to deliver the next round through the use of technology every place we can with the knowledge that we'll have to have some hard copies. There will have to be some hard copies for equity. The best way that we think that we can do it is having a two-way um, give information, get information back process, okay? But we got to take this in chunks and we got to take this in slow steps. So um, what we're going to work on this week for, for teachers, and, the, and those teachers that have already devised a district approved one way or two way piece of communication, and it's district vetted and approved, great, thank you. you you're ahead of the game, you're, we're with you, we're not gonna stop you, we're not gonna curtail you as long as you follow the rules and stay within the parameters, don't, don't, don't get carried away there. Great, we're not gonna force you to do something that you, if you've got that going, you're gonna be able to run and roll with it and give information out. Again, this is for after the break, after the 27th of April, when I believe we'll still be out. For those that don't, we're going to spend this week, and I'm hoping to make the day Wednesday and Thursday of this week, when the great duo of Roger and Jean all under Mr. Granary's direction, all of our temps, all of our technology, you know, great people, I can name them all, all of Ray's staff is going to be offering to you instruction on how to design a teacher website. Okay. In, in my head, as I talk to these people that are way smarter than me, if each teacher has a website, we can at least begin to post information for students to get and grab. This will push the work out to kids, okay? At a teacher website. Again, let me reconnoiter a minute here. If you have a two-way communication or a one-way communication system set up, God love you, you can use it. But if you don't, we're going to start our training. And the question was, will there be training on a digital platform? The answer is yes. It's going to be around the building of a website, which will be a one-way source to push information out. Then we're going to stop and take a breath. Remember, I have to, because of, because of the concrete, anal, sequential person I am, I got to do this in chunks. Then we will come back to you with a more robust way to get things back to make it two-way, okay? When does this have to be done? It doesn't have to be done tomorrow. When will we give in-service? This week, I'm looking very sternly at Ray and team to set these webinars up for Wednesday and Thursday so the teachers will have a step-by-step -step way to build the web page. I have to we have to do this as if I were a teacher. And if I were a teacher, I'm not proud to say this, but I would be the one that would need this kind of tutorial. Okay, I would need this tutorial personally. So we will give you a schedule and you can attend every one that you want to. We'll have one at nine, one at 11, one at one. We'll even do one at seven o'clock because realistically speaking, we know uh, and we believe and we appreciate many of you have your own children at home and, and there may be little ones and things. 
You may want to you may want to be able to talk to somebody live at night. These will also be archived. So when we're not there at 11 o'clock at night or five o'clock in the afternoon, you can go and get the information in the steps and you can build them. We have, uh, we can do this people, we can do this. We will do this. Uh, we will, we are gonna do this, we will do it. I know it's uncomfortable, I know it will push some. It would have pushed me, but we, we will do this and we can do this. I have a responsibility an obligation, and I'm not trying to sound bigger than who I am, but I took an oath to help lead this community in education, and that's what the best advice I'm getting to do is. If you have a two-way system already, knock yourself out. Again, this doesn't start until April 27th. You'll have time this week to get as much information as you need to. We'll stay with you. We'll do webinars on Saturday and Sunday. We'll be here for everyone. But we need to have a platform to launch from. And the platform will be teacher web pages. It's simple. It's efficient. It's a template that'll have apps off of it that'll help you to push information to the learning of your students. Um, we're not going to be doing these so these great things we do like coding and all this other stuff. It's we're going to have to pull back on all that great stuff. There'll be time over the summer. We'll have to expand our summer camps for all that great stuff that you do and we do. But we're we're, we're we'll, we'll have a lot of time for that. So I want to pause now, take a breath, maybe take a sip of water. I uh, hope that three more people join because we're only at 297 and I'd love to break the 302 record. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm going to pause here. I, I want to, I, I know I gave you a lot there. Uh, I know there's going to be a, let me just say this. Here's what I can't answer. If it's Tuesday and it's raining and the web page goes down and I need to put a great, I can't answer those questions. I just can't. I can't. I, I do have some thoughts about grading. And I do have some thoughts about pushing workout. I'll share those with you now. It does no good to push workout if we don't give any feedback to it. I know a little bit about feedback loops. So we'll talk about that in phase three or four. I know it becomes difficult to give a grade. I have in my mind ways to give uh, incompletes and pass, I and P's. You know, so I have th thoughts in my mind. I'm just not ready to unroll the whole carpet yet but to do this in bits and bites, dribs and drabs, to keep 600 teachers with us, to keep you know 1,200 employees together, and to keep 7,253 kids learning in some rate. With that, I pause, and we'll, we'll answer any questions about that <laughs> or things I said before. If the questions are difficult, I'll give them to Mr. Carell or Mr. Granary. Okay, I've got a first question that uh, maybe can be directed to Ray. <clears throat> and the question is asking whether or not all of the apps like Zoom that are connected to 365, uh, <clears throat> are all of those, those that are approved, are the, is there a list of those available on the district website? No, not at that depth level. Um, I can tell you if it's under the Office 365 umbrella, uh, that would mean that we're using them or the potential is for use. There are a ton of collaborative tools in with, uh, within Office 365. As we progress, um, as we start to continue to use Office 365, it really um, encompasses a lot of the outside tools that we're using. The issue is we've just been moving forward in stages in 365. Uh, I encourage people to use that as much as they can. Um, and I can and I can get a detailed list of all the apps within, but there isn't one that exists because it's evolving um, almost, I won't say every day, but it's evolving continually. Um, I hope that answers the question. Uh, another question, right? <clears throat> can Class Dojo be used to push information out? No, I, I mean, I think people have used that in the past. Um, um, so that's good. And again, that's kind of what uh, criteria that we've been using is it been used in the past. Um, it's it's uh, district endorsed. I think it does have its limitations, though, because um, some of the conversations have been in the past. It's a text based system. 
Um, it doesn't, um, you know, it's not Instagram, it's not Facebook, so it has some limitations. But to send a quick message home to a kid or to, um, to yeah. families or to classroom, that makes the most sense in my head. A uh, question kind of related to what uh, the superintendent uh, mentioned early on, um, are the neighboring districts, to your knowledge, doing distance teaching? Yeah, yes, they are. They are. Um, one of the one of the advantages we have is that we have the best technology and the best teachers, in my opinion. Um, but we are also the biggest. We are big. We are seven hundred seven thousand two hundred fifty students. And no, I'm not making any judgments. Lindenville has seven hundred sixty four kids. Seven hundred sixty four. That's the Niagara Falls High School cafeteria. Two periods. We have, you can put them all in the cafeteria. We have to do things that are, you know, that that are, um, you know, are are scalable on a large system. The, right now, I think it's a misnomer. We're doing, we're not doing distance learning or distance teaching. We're just doing distance information and distance reinforcement. You know, as we move forward, we in the next phase, we have to phase in distance teaching, uh, distance learning. Uh, we're not there yet, but we can't sit on reinforcement for as long as I think we're going to be out. We just can't sit on it. Um, that, that would be irresponsible to the kids, to the taxpayers. Now, this is not the way I want to go for the rest of my career, as long or as short as it might be, but it's what we're faced with right now, and we can only deal with what we're faced with. So other schools are doing things. I was just, I'm on, I'm on a group chat with the other superintendents, and they're asking, are we putting out work over the two-week Easter break? Absolutely not. We we'll, we'll all need to take a lot of walks during that time. Doesn't mean you can't do work, but we're not going to introduce new packets or new work during that time. We're going to take next week and then the week we return from break and do our tutorials and then tell people how to put things up. Also, there may come a time, and Dr. Civaroli, who I love, and she has been our right arm during all this, and, and this district has done it, I think, as well as anyone, we may have to let someone get to their classroom on a very staggered schedule, two, five people at a time, six people at a time, in a bigger school, 12 people at a time, where they can get to the, because they're going to then need to get materials. I'm not ignorant to that fact. That's got to happen. You know, I know Dr. Civaroli's probably, I hope she's listening. She doesn't miss anything I say. She cringes when I talk and she's right. She's right. She's right. She's right. She's right. But I also have to be, I have to be strategic in how we bring people in to pick st stuff up, up at a certain time. So I know that I, I'm going to have to have a strategic, we're going to have to have a strategic plan to let people back in. Thanks. Okay. A uh, little change of, uh, topic if we don't get back to school this year will we be allowed to get into our classrooms yes yeah <laughs> just yeah yeah uh, yes um we we will we'll we'll let people get back in their classrooms now how what that's going to look like is something that we're going to have to lay out mm -hmm. you know i'm thinking though after the break we may have and we did this for students where we had anybody with the last name a a and B can go in during this time. C and D, that's only for everybody's protection sure. and for everybody's safety. You know, and, and it's not, to, and, and I know people understand this, it's not to congregate, get to the copy machine, you know, go and pick this up, go see how somebody's doing. It's just to get to your, get in door one, get to your room, get in, get out. Yeah, I, at some point, and it's not this week, it is not this week, and it's not two weeks over Easter, but at some point, we will allow people to, on a schedule, get back to their room. Okay. Dr. Civaroli texted me. She just texted me. She said, keep up the good work, but keep people socially distant. And she also said, if you're a tenured person, you could fax things to her. If you have a fax machine, her fax number is 286-0758. Tenured people who want to fax information to Dr. Civaroli and you have access to that, 286-0758. She's she's kind of like our last week she was Gail Burstein. She's kind of like my Dr. Fauci now. <laughs> uh, a question is how long will the district continue to provide lunches? 
we'll provide until we return. So the lunch the lunch plan is this: every day this week, and on Friday the double lunch lunch for the Friday and for the Saturday and Sunday. The day that we won't is Good Friday. That's the Friday before Easter. So we'll do a double or maybe triple lunch on Thursday before Easter, and then hmm. Easter Monday, the Monday after, we'll be back doing lunches again. The only day, um, the only day that we won't is Good Friday. Okay. Do we have any way of knowing which of our students picked up the learning packets? Uh, simply answer, no. Uh, you know, it, it, we did that on purpose. In order to track who did by name, we would have crushed social distancing. We would have crushed it. And we don't know. And you know what? I think that um, I think that we've served a couple of lunches and picked up a couple of packets for Niagara Wheatfield students. I think that's great. Uh, we got in a couple of nice comments. They like our lunches better and our packets better. <laughs> um, I've already called the superintendent there to thank him and tell him we won't charge him. No way to know. No, no, way, no way to know. No way to monitor it. Wish we could, but it would have crushed social distancing. Uh, will the special education teachers be able to get back to their rooms in order to get necessary items for? possible remote annual review meetings. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, so thank you for that question. So when uh, I, we're, I'm meeting with virtually again, meeting with Kathy, Cheryl, Frank, and um, Ken tomorrow, we'll, we'll have, that's, a, that's, I know they need materials to work off of and talk off of. Yeah, we'll have to include that. They'll probably be a group that we let in first, just because, um, I want them to be fully prepared for their annual review meetings. So I've got note of that. Yeah, the answer is yes. They may be the exception to what I just said about next week. Okay. Okay. While we are working, uh, Gene, you got a question? Well, I'm sorry. While we are being paid as a full-time employee, can we work secondary employment during our normal school day hours while we are off? For example, <laughs> they said in a restaurant, which I'm sure is closed. Uh, Walmart, Aldi's, or so forth? Not, not between the contractual hours, no. Between your contractual hours, and I know they vary by level, it's, eight, it's 845 to 310 elementary, 7, 735 to 2, 230 or 220 prep, 810 to 310 high school. The answer is no, don't do that. Do not do that, please. Do not do that. Um, don't do that. I think I said that enough. If you want to work after that, that's your time and your business. If you want to work on the weekend, that's your time and your business. But I'm asking staff, teachers, to be very cognizant of the fact that we are very fortunate people. Very fortunate people. Hourly people included. Very fortunate people. Your work time is, uh, is sacred. You're getting paid for that. You should you should be posting uh, anything during that work time on social media sources. And you shouldn't be getting secondary employment on that time. The 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 rare, 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 rare exception, the rare exception that I could think that we would have to discuss is that if the governor in the hospital calls for nurses uh, to staff our hospitals, that I would have to, you know, then we would have to have a conversation with that person individually. But you know, and that's the, our nursing staff has been put on notice, and our and Dr. Civaroli has been put on notice that if it ever came to that, you know, she may have to go to a hospital to work, which knowing her and knowing our nurses, they would do. That would be the only exception that I could even contemplate having to deal with. Otherwise, no. Uh, another, uh, more of a comment or a statement than less than a question is that whether or not uh, was someone or uh, it was heard that uh, Spectrum was offering free Wi-Fi to yeah. families yeah. who don't have it and yeah. need it. And let me take, yeah, you know what? Let me take this on right head on, okay? I have nothing. I, as a matter of fact, I pay a lot to Spectrum for my service, a lot. Um, <laughs> so let me take this on. Let me, and again, I don't want to be, I don't want to come out against some 
company in any way, shape, or form. My concern with Spectrum, and I may be proven wrong, or I may be uh, an alarmist or too conservative on this, is that their 60, what happens after their 60-day offer? And after their 60-day offer, if we told a family to go to Spectrum and they forgot because they're enjoying it for their internet or whatever, and we forgot, the district could be liable to pay for those Spectrum costs. I, I, I just, you know, I just want to make that point. That's why I'm so reluctant to go there, okay? Uh, the Housing Authority, I, we talked to Mr. Scott, Cliff Scott yesterday at the Housing Authority to, to talk about that, and, and no, he felt the same way. Again, there's there are bad superintendents, there are bad doctors, there are bad lawyers, there are bad people in every profession, right? Uh, hopefully none of us are there, but I, I can't advise that. I just can't advise taking the spectrum offer and running the risk of having to incur a bill after I advise them to, to use that. And I know that sounds overly conservative and overly pessimistic and very half full, but that's the reason why, okay? I'll, I'll leave it there. Okay. Can we do volunteer work during hours that we normally would be at work at places like community missions? I love community missions. I love volunteer work. While you're at work between the hours of eight and three, for all intents and purposes, you're at work for the Niagara Falls Board of Education. I would say you can volunteer at 3.30, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I'm not trying to be, not you know, not altruistic, you, you understand? We're, you're, you're, you really need to have your work hours guarded for the next week, um, for, the, for the period of time that we're off of school. Please uh, volunteer, volunteer at night, volunteer in the afternoon, volunteer on Saturday, volunteer on Sunday, volunteer in the, you know during during non-school hours. Okay, thanks, Raj. Uh, let's. Uh, my question is about a comprehensive district approved list. Well, I think we kind of talked about that. Uh, various resources. Uh, do students have their sign-ins? For Office 365, if they don't know, how can they get it? Well, the login for Office 365 mimics how they would, for the certain degree, mimics how they would log on to the network. Uh, so, for instance, I would log on to the network as our granary for a username. For Office 365, you just put the suffix at nfschools.net. The password would be the same password that you would use to log on to the network. Um, if they don't remember that, um, they can always put in a, um, they can make a call. I mean, Q Center is alive and well, but that's mostly for staff. Um, but the number for IS is, district, is listed on the COVID website. Um, they can make a call or they can email to me and I could provide that information or reset passwords if it's not known. Okay. Uh, will general education teachers be included in annual review meetings? Uh, yeah, uh, we would like that to happen. I need to get, I need, that's a, another really good point for annual review meetings. Um, we want to, we want to mirror the committee as best we can, but there are, there have been relief provisions to that. If I'm reading the special education um, memos that are coming out of, out of SED, right? There are relief provisions to that, but in cases where we can invite the general ed teacher, I'm going to insist on that. I just need to work on that with our team here this week. So my goal is tomorrow I'm having a 10 o'clock call with the, the central team. Then I'm going to ask them to branch out and get feedback from the special ed teachers, some general ed teachers, and then we'll come back and I'll put a, a webinar, or not a webinar, I'll do a YouTube video and a call just around annual review. Uh, but it would be my hope that as many as the as many as mandated report participants as possible were on that call. But uh, there are relief provisions that I've read and that the special ed team has read that allows for some relief on who are the mandated members are. But I'd love to have all the general ed teachers on with them. Assuming everything's resolved by June 30th, do you believe the district will offer summer school? Yes. Yes, there will be, I hope it's resolved by then, number one. Number two, we'll offer summer school, the BOCES summer school, and we'll offer the district ELP, uh, a cataract, a cataract only. 
again, the reason we're tying up only two schools to get the air conditioning in the other schools. And then um, I've said already next summer, we're going to keep cataract with no programs in it so we can really thoroughly clean that school and put the new bathrooms in that school. The new bathrooms have taken a back seat at cataract because we're going to be doing so many students over there this summer. Yes, I do. So if a teacher has a um, application for BOCE summer school, fill it out when it comes out. And when Mr. Corella puts out the um, postings for summer school for ELP, please apply. Those aren't out yet. I don't want to confuse things by putting postings out now. Hopefully, we'll we'll tell you on a webinar and on an I'll call when the postings are out. But yeah, we'll we'll definitely have it as long as this crisis is resolved. Okay. Last week you said uh, about working papers online. But how yes. can students obtain working papers permit? They need to sign in front of the staff. Are students going to be allowed into the school to get permits? No, they won't be allowed into the school to get permits. There's a link and, you know, big shout out to Diane Spacone here. I, 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 I send her things, Ray sends her things, Rick sends her things, everybody's sending her things. And she's like a, she's like an air traffic controller right now. <laughs> she, the planes are coming into O'Hare. She's taking the planes in and pumping them out faster than they can land. She just so emailed big, me about a minute ago. <laughs> she is our new air traffic controller. She, she, we're, we're throwing things at her left and right, and she's responding faster than I can send them on uh, the next thing. So, okay, so there's a link somewhere. She'll tell us where it is uh, on, our, on our COVID site. Uh, kids should fill those out. I know there's a requirement for um, health uh, or physicals. We're not doing physicals. And if a student has everything filled out but needs a signature, uh, I'll they can email me and I'll sign it for them uh, at, a, at an approved time. Uh, if that is a case with a student needing working papers and all they need is a signature, have them email me, mlaurie at nfschools. I check my email day and night, and I'll work out a time, and I'll uh, sign the papers for them. Because I want our kids working. Wegmans, Tops, uh, all those places that, you know, are employing, it's a great time for kids to work and make money and help. help. Uh, I know that they're, they're, they need workers. So, yeah, I'll do any, anything I can to get a kid working. And a technical question um, regarding the use of FaceTime. Is that something that's okay? I know it's not Microsoft Teams, and she thinking, and that it's not, but are we allowed to post ourselves reading books to students on Dojo as well? Yeah, uh, technically, I don't think there's an issue doing that. I mean, this is kind of new ground um, because obviously we've been sitting in classrooms. Um, but it is, it's, it's technically not software that we've used in the district in the past. This is outside the, the district network. So one of my concerns is, um, is not applicable in this case. Yeah. I don't love the idea. No, I don't love the idea for a lot of reasons. I, you know, I don't know, maybe there's, I don't know. I don't know the links, but maybe, the, maybe there's other ways to get, yeah. have people read to you during this time. Yeah. I, you know, I would rather do a YouTube video. Yeah. I would rather, I don't, I'm, do, I'm doing this on the fly and this is where I get in trouble, but I would rather uh, have some of our staff here make YouTube videos of reading to kids and then posting the YouTube video mm -hmm. as opposed to what that question yeah. is. It seems like kind of an alternate thing to, we have other other thoughts like uh, Superintendent just said, we have YouTube, we have other sources to do that same kind of delivery. So I wouldn't go on the outsides of that circle of software if you don't have to. Yeah, I, it's a, but it's a good question because now, you know, um, we, we should probably be doing that, different levels, doing a you know 10-minute reading, 15-minute reading of a book. It's a great idea, and um, I'm, uh, I think I'm going to nominate, huh? The idea, so Rick is pointing out three, and I'm like, what's three mean? Phase three. <laughs> phase two is phase two is web pages. Phase three is that, but, you know, I think we'll have Dr. Civaroli read a book. And maybe let's see who else. Um, uh, maybe like Miss Massaro. She has a very soothing, calm voice. I think I'm going to have her read a book too. And Mr. <laughs> Gerizzo, he checked out 13 books from the LaSalle Library. I th he would be a good person to read a book. 
I'm not a good out loud reader. I, I was telling somebody when I was a when I was at vice principal at this is when I morphed now into the to my starting to get cloudy in my head. When I was a vice principal at Abbott, when I had the one lunchroom, that's what I that's what I would do. I would the last ten minutes I would read a book. I read the bridge a bridge to Terabithia. I read that and that was the way I would get the kids uh, calm and quiet before their teachers picked them up. And I had a really bad habit of putting my own words into the story to see if anybody was paying attention. I can tell you the names of three kids that would always yell out and say, that's not in the book, you're making it up. <laughs> it brought me back about 25 years ago to, to my lunch <laughs> at Abbott when yeah. I would read books and throw in my own words. But that's what I think we'll do. I think we'll start, start reading books on YouTube. You know, the what only else? thing is, somebody just mentioned that there might be copyright issues when you start yeah. reading books online. Yeah. You do have to be careful probably, of that. Probably are. Hey, listen, th there probably are copyright laws. Listen to this one. One of the calls on our state website call yesterday was this. We bought surgical masks, N95 masks, and goggles, and thermometers. So what we did was we gave the thermometers to the fire department. We gave the surgical masks to the hospital. And we gave the goggles to the police and fire. Uh, so people were asking, you know, is that a gift of public funds not to be used for the proper places? I'm like, constitutionally, this was on the call yesterday. Constitutionally, they're probably right. I did it. I'm putting it on this webinar. I don't think. I hope I don't go to jail for it. You know, <laughs> I mean, sometimes, sometimes during these crazy, unprecedented times. You have to do what's right with common sense. Yeah, I did that. I maybe we'll get our goggles back. Maybe we won't. I know I'll get our thermometers back. Maybe we'll never see the masks again. That's okay. There's a greater good at the police, fire, and hospital. A greater good. If that's the worst thing that I've done, so be it. So I understand about copyright laws. So maybe I can make a YouTube video that that has me reading. So long answer to a to a good question. A uh, question related to the upcoming work we're going to be doing with teacher websites is uh, when they are set up by the district, will the teachers be able to update and edit it on their own? And I know that there are also issues with ADA compliance, and I think I can answer that. And the answer is yes, teachers will be able to update and edit it on their own. And part of the training will address the ADA compliance issue as well. Yeah, what Diane Spicone has been working on all weekend just about is looking at different levels of templates and associated apps. The thought is, is that um, hopefully by Tuesday or Wednesday, um, we're going to have uh, this established. So it'll be a matter of using a template with apps that are going to provide functions to, again, the, the thought behind all this is to make a effective uh, website that's easy to put together because it's it's being housed by a template and it's using apps to do things. That's our intent. Yeah, you know, you know what? I've gotten some feedback. Change it. Thank you, Ray, and thank you, Roger. I've got some feedback about our auto dialer. Ray has a what he calls a ticket into the company. Sometimes it cuts off early. Sometimes it cuts off late. Sometimes it gets garbled. We have we know that we're aware of that. Uh, Ray's got a call or a ticket into the company that. We purchased this from. He put it in late Friday, so hopefully he'll have more information on that uh, tomorrow. He's going to follow up on that for me. But I, I want to acknowledge that as as a problem. A related issue to again the teacher websites. If uh, students have access to uh, YouTube, etc., um, what about the use of Clever? If the teachers put up links. Uh, that they use in their classroom, but these are now outside the school environment, will uh, the clever sign-in uh, be an issue? Yeah, and, and uh, actually we put together right out of the gate, if you look at the COVID website, um, right on that main page is a, um, I believe it's called a software information sheet um, that lists, uh, and actually Rick put together durations and some instructions on how you Good. should use it. And uh, it's all being delivered uh, through Clever, uh, which is a great single server uh, logon system. So yes, that has been integrated. If you go to the COVID site, uh, you'll see a per grade level, uh, a list of software that's in district and been used. And that I think would be the great launching pad for that.
Gene? No, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Raj. If you have up, Gene, wake up. Oh, no, I'm sitting here. I was waiting. Uh, Raj, you were doing such a great job. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. Um, well, it, it's, again, the, it, the issue has to deal with getting uh, granting access to all students and the, the equity issue. Um, the problem. We're all going to be dealing. Yes, it is a problem. And it's a problem. It's a, it's a problem. Yeah. It's, but that that's not just a problem in Niagara Falls. The 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 the, the rural areas have this as a problem. Uh, they we have devices. They don't have um, they don't have devices out there in some of those school districts. That's what they're lamenting. We have the devices, but we don't have the access points. I guess we call them everywhere in the city. That's our problem. What else you got? got? Got to notice our last two uh, questions here as, as they're coming in, these are all time stamped. that apparently uh, the president just extended the social distancing requirement uh, until the 30th of April. Does that right. have any effect on the current timeline that we're working under? Well, I guess I guess it, it just signals that um, he was wrong about going to Easter Sunday mass. <laughs> That's number one. I'll try to keep my political feelings out of this. Number two, uh, that this is going to be a long haul. This is going to this is going to be a long, long haul. Number three, it really reinforces the point that we've got to work tirelessly this week on web pages because and new learning, and know that it's not a nefarious plot to eliminate anybody. It's a fact of where we are in this situation. And we have obligations to deliver learning to kids and education to kids. And we'll do it the best way we can. So I would think if the president says the 30th, that puts us way into May here, folks, uh, especially with the governor being much more conservative on this apex and the coming down of. So I don't think we're going to be in school in April. Um, that just, increases our urgency to get these web pages going and to push out new information so uh, a question about the packets again is um can we how do if kids have questions about the packets how can they get help e yeah the, i would think the first thing that they could do is email their teachers uh email their administrators and then um you know People, people, our teachers and administrators should be looking at their email at least twice a day. At least, I, 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 um, I know that um, I've given Rick a few questions because I can't answer things on the fifth grade packet. Um, God love the, God love our teachers and kids for the work they're doing there. Thank God Rick can answer them because I can't. Um, but really, email your teacher, email your principal, um, and then. Uh, They'll, they'll they'll certainly be able to to get to help as best they can. My my big concern about packets and push and workout is doing work incorrectly and not getting corrected on it and reinforcing uh, poor learning. <laughs> so this is not a perfect system by any chance. The beauty and power of a teacher is feedback. Feedback is in where all the learning takes place. So we're not working with ideal circumstances here. Okay. Question, will SPED teachers be able to get back into their rooms in order to get necessary items for possible remote annual review meetings? Yes, they will. I just need to write the, no, I'm not gonna write it. We just need to set the plan. And what we will do then is make uh, days and times when special ed teachers can get back to their school and their room first for a very brief second, 10, 20 minutes to pick up and then leave. We will probably have information on that middle of the week. Hmm, okay. Can teacher co-teachers build a website together or can they share access with their co-teachers? I'm not sure we know that. <laughs> yeah, I well, I'm looking at Rick now and then Ray, I, I, it sounds like a great idea. The answer is yes. So yes, the answer is yes. Yeah. Listen, our teachers have embraced. You know, I, I, yeah. I I'm really, I was really proud of co-teaching this year. It was, it was a real hallmark of this year so far. 
So I would do everything I can to encourage that. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, okay. that's a great idea. That's the method you're gonna use? The answer is yes. I wanna keep promoting co-teaching because I believe in that so strongly. And I thought our teachers did such a great job. I was, one of the, I, I was gonna put that as one of our top accomplishments of the year. It's benefiting kids, it's helping kids. We got over some early bumps and lumps and pimples and warts, go for it. A question about the teachers who, uh, I say not part of the Magic 289 here tonight, uh, how will they be made aware of the training opportunities and what we're talking about with uh, creating and uh, editing teacher web pages? But by this Wednesday, Rick and I are Rick and I are talking sidebarring here. There's a couple of ways. I'll put that um, I'll put some of it on my auto dialer call, but I know that's garbled and cuts off. I'll do a YouTube video on it, and then we'll do we'll use the written word, a written letter uh, that I asked Mr. Carella to pen for me that we will uh, disperse over the email and uh, blast it out to everybody with all of the instructions and all the thinking behind it if you weren't part of that magic 286 to hear the answer. So we'll put it, we'll put it in writing to you as well uh, with all the steps and all the resources and a uh, recap of everything. Okay. Um, will we be able to build our website that they've already created? I can answer that yes. You'll be building from that if you already have one. Um, but they, again, we'll be going through the whole uh, thing with approved and recommended apps and formats and so on. Uh, that will certainly be part of the training. And will the teacher websites be linked to the district page? They will be under the current structure for teacher web pages at each of the individual schools. And I think that's correct, a correct assumption, is it not, Ray? Yes. Good questions. Uh, is it still okay to use Remind? Yes. Yes. That doesn't push out work, does it? No. no, so no. Not, not, not in lieu of a web page? Not in lieu of, so, that, so we're sidebarring. Good question. Yeah, it's okay to use Remind, but it's not going to be uh, in lieu of a web page because it doesn't push out work, in my understanding. It's just updates, right? Yeah, quick messages. Quick right? messages, yeah, yeah. More of a text. Yeah. Yes, yes, and uh, yes, you can use it, but not for, not to, uh, Sub, supplant a web page. Okay. I think you answered this one, but it might be best to reiterate. If we plan to use Remind and Zoom to communicate with our classes, do we still need to create or update a teacher website? Well, Remind definitely. Yeah, Remind is just a, a, mm -hmm. a that's just an informer, a pusher out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a kid may want to print something out. So yes, we'll need a website. Because you know, there may be kids with printers that want to print something out and work on it. Mm -hmm. So the answer is yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And we're getting some technical questions about again Zoom, which is not an officially adopted um, resource within uh, the technology in the district. Um, I think those questions can be best answered on the resource itself about uh, some technical issues regarding Zoom, et cetera. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, these I'm questions, gonna again, go we'll, we'll be forwarding these questions. Some of them are, are a bit detailed uh, to the superintendent um, to address well, later on in the week as well with other webinars and yeah. other issues. That's that's right, Raj. So what we'll do is I'm, I'm looking at these two gentlemen putting the pressure on them to say by Wednesday, Thursday, maybe, we want to start our webinars for, for the instruction on web pages. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but we got to get this letter out to inform the non-282 now. And we got to tell everybody this is the expectation. Uh, Rick is assuring me that he thinks we can get that done by Tuesday so that we can start webinars on Wednesday. And then we'll get into the more technical stuff. You know, we'll, start, we'll start very practically and very fundamentally and then we'll get more technically as we technically as we move on. Um, let's see. What about tier three elementary students who need interventions? 
Uh, uh, that's that's a phase four question. You know, phase so so phase one was paper packets. Phase two is web pages. Phase three is when I read the kids. Phase four is going to be the getting back to the um, the tears, the RTI. That was the word I was looking for. Thank you, Rick. The RTI. I just I just am not there yet. I'm not there yet. Um, I, I want to I want to take this in chunks, and the next chunk is going to be web pages and other sources to push out information and then the next chunk really will be to receive information so it becomes a two-way street yeah i'm not there yet sorry i i feel bad for the kids i feel bad i, I do I, I don't know how to do that any better uh, somewhat related to uh again everything with the websites and so on will the pep staff need to create web pages as well oh no, no, you're talking about like TAs and things like that? Yeah. Yeah, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, it says, I have teacher friends in other states using Zoom and getting bombed with inappropriate material. Do we have any blockers to avoid this? Huh? No. <laughs> I don't think there's no, any, anything. Not that I'm aware. No, I, I don't think there is anything. Just, but. I think it's just, I think, again, I'm not the technology guy here, but I think it's just being very aware when, when and if you're using it, how you're using it, what your purpose is, being extremely cautious um, and knowing that it's not going to be the method that we're going to push student learning or student work on off of. Mm -hmm. yeah, my understanding is like what's going on now with Zoom is outside any of the school networks themselves zoom mm -hmm. much like youtube is a uh, perhaps you know going through filters when they're coming through uh in district in in school uh technology devices now that teachers are out on their own and there's no doubt i think this is what they're referring to doing this on their own uh there are no filters to me uh, if you're on spectrum or whatever you're on right i'm not getting filtered into my house Right, uh, no content filtering on a personal device. That's all under the umbrella of the district. And somebody right. is and with a teacher laptops at home. Is that mm -hmm. outside the content uh, content filtering system? Yes. Yeah. And yes. some okay. yeah, somebody yes. has just said you can only use filters for people entering Zoom with paid accounts, and most of us would not have that. No. Yeah, that's the that spectrum zoom those are those are tough ones you know you, you kind of know my position on that. that that's why i'm trying to get a common platform of web pages there are so many teachers that are so far more advanced than me um but at least we'll all have a common starting point to build from and i'll just add on the in the, as far as zoom goes the reason why one of the reasons why we're kind of endorsing it district-wide is administratively we use zoom all the time uh, the superintendent uses it daily to yeah. uh, in his meetings with Orleans Niagara superintendents. Uh, the assessment office, Marcia Capone, it's, it's, we use it extensively, administratively. Um, it's vetted. Uh, we feel comfortable with it. But now we're on um, really new ground here, going into a classroom with students and awareness outside. And um, uh, content filtering, it really doesn't exist. And this kind of leads into why we're trying to stay as close to the best as possible with vetted software. That being said, we still want to uh, provide resources that can't help. So in the context of Zoom, it's really kind of right down the middle of um, comfort level of, of use. There is going to be issues, but uh, there are some benefits. That, um, so it's a tough one, like the superintendent said. Yeah. There is a remind widget that can be put on a personal website so students can scroll through all past and current remind text. Uh, and we are reminded of that. Okay, thank you. A question regarding report cards. Um, they said they will be liberal with guilt. You said it would be liberal with giving incomplete as a grade. Can a failing yeah. grade be given if it is what a student actually earned, or should an incomplete be given in all cases? Can a fail? No, I, I mean, you know your kids best. You know your students best. 
there are some students, you, you, you have to look at every individual student. There are some students who earnestly were going to turn work in or, you know, have had a habit of doing that. And there are, then there are some students who haven't earned the right to get an incomplete because they haven't shown up, they haven't done quality work, they really haven't put forth any effort. Um, so they deserve the grade they're getting. All I would say is this is an unprecedented time. And I always would err on the side of a student, but I'm not going to decree that you can't give a failing grade. You have to look at each student individually, do the right thing. And if that student hasn't shown up, hasn't participated, hasn't turned work in, hasn't, you know, really shown the need to come, shown the desire after 20 and a half weeks to come back and change that incomplete, then you do what you need to do as a teacher. That's that's how I'd answer that question. Let's see. Uh, can seesaw, right? Can seesaw be used as a class resource? Is that an approved app? What I would suggest, I think, is I think the uh, the list could be growing. Uh, I would ask, as what happened last week, I had a bunch of email on Monday morning. Uh, I think it'd be best suited if um, if I su could suggest that teachers email me personally um, anything that they're you know any questions on what could or could not be used. I think I have a better um, more time and a better chance of delivering um, a, a good question a good answer. I think we're starting to see a lot of uh, specific Repeat. questions, specific applications uh, yeah. being referred to. I'm seeing Zoom come up quite a bit. And I yeah, think, you know, we've addressed the district's concerns yeah. uh, with that in particular. Uh, uh, yes, and uh, Mr. Laurie, uh, Dan Weiss has said he'd like to get in touch with you concerning its use later as well. So I guess well, he'll get, be getting in touch with you, okay? The use of Zoom? I, I believe that's what he was referring to. Right. Yeah, we talk pretty frequently. Okay. We agree pretty frequently. Sometimes we don't. Mostly we agree. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Any any question related to software technology? Uh, please email me. I'm here. Uh, you know, every day. Give me a call directly. I'll be glad to have further conversation. And if I don't have an answer uh, directly, I'll be sure to get uh, to get back. At the end of the day, you know, never want technology to be a reason uh, or a source of grief. Right. Okay. And, and I try to give direct answers. I've been on about 14 webinars in the last two weeks. And um, a lot of it is, I don't know, we'll see. I, I, you know, I'm trying to give as direct an answer as I can. But again, I preface that all with the fact that the world is in an ambiguous place right now. And uh, I wish we knew more answers, but that's why we're chunking this out slowly. But uh, we we'll, we'll get through it together. We'll get through it together. If you if you have new questions, I'm looking looking forward to answering them. If not, I know we're about 90 minutes in here. Yeah, and what well, we might we say, will summarize all the questions um, yeah. asked and answered um, as we do uh, every week, and mm -hmm. remind teachers, although we aren't necessarily closing right now, that there will be a follow up survey sent to everyone who attended tonight's webinar. And it's sent, the survey is sent to the email address that was used to register for tonight's webinar. In 90% of the cases, that was the school district email, but occasionally some people use their personal emails for whatever reason. The thank you for attending and the survey link is sent to whatever email was used to register tonight. So be on the lookout for that, please, in the next a uh, couple hours and the next day. If you have unanswered questions, uh, please uh, put those into your survey and we will uh, put those together and get them all to the superintendent to address in one of his other uh, video productions this week, be it webinar, <laughs> on YouTube, et cetera. And will you- Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll answer by, I'll answer by YouTube, uh, YouTube video or if there, like there's a common question or in an email or something like that. What were you going to ask, Gene? I was going to say, and will you be joining us next Sunday? I'll come on every Sunday if you want. 
I, if this is helpful to somebody, well, I'm we're happy to come on for, you know, hundred now. teachers each Sunday. We're getting a number of good questions. So it's really good. Well, they're helping me too, because yeah. there's some things out there that I have got to get more. Yeah. I'll come on next Sunday. Okay. I, uh, the only thing I've been doing is watching a lot of movies. I can give a movie <laughs> review. I always wanted to do this. Roger and Gene, you probably are the only ones that will know this guy. You remember Rex Reed? Oh, yes. Oh, gee. Yeah. 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 Are you saying we're old? <laughs> we're the only ones who remember him? Yeah. yeah. You're the only two. Rick and Ray are looking at me like, who's Rex Reed? He's a movie critic. Siskel and Eber. They, they were like, I want to do that. That's what I want to do. So here's what I got for you. I watched uh, Dark Waters yesterday under Mr. Corella's um, direction. It's kind of depressing, but it was an interesting story. I like Ford versus Ferrari. And I, I am not a, I'm not a Love motorhead it. at all. Mm -hmm. I don't like car racing at all. But that was my one of my favorite ones. I watched Parasite, uh, which I thought was really it was really good. Like I don't want to read these read these subtitles all night, but it was really good. I did not like Bombshell. What else did I watch? Oh God, I can't <laughs> remember what else I watched. <laughs> up up on my. Yeah, that that that's kind of what I've been doing is watching uh, a movie a night. Um, that's what I've been trying to do. I watched Gotti last night. I watched two movies last night. Gotti wasn't very good. John Travolta was Gotti. Um, I've been trying to watch one or two movies a day a night. Uh, I, I I love I love movies. I've been watching the Sabers win again. <laughs> MSG. That, that's yeah. a real thrill. Right, right. Do they show any losses? Uh, get one the uh, the post 9/11 match against the Rangers. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, and I was rooting for the Rangers. Anyway. <laughs> I, I want to bet you bet on <laughs> bet on some of those games. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm betting oh, my brother. Right. He's in Seattle. He's losing a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. I can't even think of any other movies that I watched recently, but uh, they all start to run together. Um, yeah, Ford versus Ferrari was my favorite one. Uh, I liked it for the history. I thought the history yeah, I didn't was know that story. Yeah. yeah. I did not know that story. I'm trying to watch trying to watch all the Academy Award winners first. You know, or not nominees first. Yeah, I, I I'm catching up on a lot of stuff myself. Hey, uh, I, and I'm not watching those movies during my contracted work day. No. You know? <laughs> Uh, here, here's the telltale sign that I'm going on too long. That the LaSalle English teacher, the seventh grade, don't reply to all English teacher. Just text me. He goes, enough with the movie review. Start to wrap it up. Mm. <laughs> I think I saw him this afternoon saying hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah. On, that, on the LaSalle <laughs> video. Oh yeah, that's a pretty that's a pretty cool uh, that's a pretty cool video LaSalle. The high schools was great. Yeah. Mr. Chicago got me with the car trick. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jekovic with the Corona, the Corona song. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> my son obviously has 92 rolls of toilet paper. I saw that. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's really creative work by the teachers. I, I yeah. really, I really love that. Um, I really, I really love seeing that. That's really great. Makes our community better. Yeah. Thank you guys very much. Send me the questions. Thank you to Rick and Ray who stayed with me. Rick tells me I didn't get too far off my leash. He's here just to prod me back into the, the my right lane. He likes when I get off my leash on these, and then he's got to do all the work the rest of the week. But he said <laughs> I did okay this week. Thank you, everybody. Very good, everyone. Again, look for that survey shortly, and uh, we'll give it a couple of days uh, for you to respond, and then we'll get all of the summary detail to the superintendent to address later this week guys yeah uh and again i just saw that abbott did a video last week if you do have it uh send me a link and we'll get it to uh diane so she can post it as well hey and I thank you I seen abbott's. we'll get it to the air traffic controller diane spacone absolutely get it up. thank you very much hey have a good week everybody we hope you'll join us again next week and thank you again mr laurie thank you good night good night everyone, everyone. Yeah, stay safe. Get the shot.